We say yay to Friday. Beautiful sunrise out there, by the way. Uh, if you may be able to catch a uh, last few glimpses of it, but uh, about 20 minutes ago, it was unbelievable. Red sky everywhere, beautiful things. Um, and uh, talking about beautiful things, of course, uh, beautiful things to the ears is the music of the Cape Cod Symphony Orchestra. Jung Ho Park is the artistic director, the conductor of the orchestra. He's uh, been here for five years, if you can believe that, and he just uh, re-signed a contract to sign on for another five years here on Cape Cod, uh, strengthening his commitment to the region and the orchestra. I got a chance to sit down with him. We headed over to the uh, Highness Harbor Arts Center at the Geyer Barn, sat down and talked a little bit about uh, what the last five years have been like, what he's looking for in the future, and, uh, in, and what you can expect. A little bit of holiday stuff over the symphony, too. So without further ado, let's go to this week's arts and culture segment here on Barnstable this morning. Good morning, everyone. I'm Sarah Colvin here at the Hyannis Harbor Arts Center at the Geyer Barn. And today, I'm very pleased to welcome into our studio Jung Ho Pak. He is the, the artistic director and conductor of the Cape Cod Symphony Orchestra. Jung Ho, welcome. Thanks, Sarah. It's great to be here. And thank you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure to have you on. So, of course, uh, you've been here with the Cape Cod Symphony since 2007. Uh, five years has gone by really quickly. What has. has that first five years been like for you? It has been an incredible wonderful journey and surprise, actually. Um, when I came to the Cape first, I, I knew some basic things about it. I knew it was a good orchestra. Uh, I knew the musicians were open to new things. I knew the administration and the board wanted the orchestra to evolve. But what really surprised me the most was the audience. I had no idea that the audience would be so warm and so welcoming, and it's really a reflection of the community. Uh, I really got it very quickly. I understood what made the Cape special. Uh, it's a very sophisticated audience because a lot of people are, are washashores from, from major metropolitan areas. They're very sophisticated in their, in their background. Um, of course, there's some local people who've been here their entire lives and their families have been here for generations. But when they get here, everyone is part of a community. They choose to live on Cape Cod. And that sense of, of small town community, along with wanting to find the very best in quality, that is what makes the Cape special. So my five years have been kind of this extended housewarming party where I feel like <laughs> everywhere I go, people have just made me feel so incredibly welcome and so appreciated. Well, it's wonderful uh, just in seeing the last five years, the energy that you've brought to the Cape Cod Symphony. And, uh, you know, people are, are still talking about it, which is, is wonderful. And we certainly look forward to seeing that in the years to come. Of course, you have just renewed your contract. Yeah. Um, what kind of a decision was like that like for you? Was it an easy decision to say, yes, I want to stay with, with Cape Cod? It was an easy decision, but I still had to discuss it with my family, and, and it was, a, a, of course, a, a long-term commitment because most orchestra conductors sign three-year agreements, and that's usually the, the right amount of time for people to, to reevaluate. But the first five years have been just so incredibly exciting and fruitful that we find that the next five years, if we have that kind of long-term commitment with each other, we can accomplish some amazing things. Um, some of those goals include expanding our education program. Uh, right now, we've got some kernel uh, core education music programs that have reached thousands of kids every year. But our goal ultimately is to reach every child on the Cape and Islands. And I know that sounds awfully ambitious, but we believe that great art is the right of every single man, woman, and child. And that if it's made accessible, free, absolutely to no cost to the child, and it's easy to implement for the schools that the programs are easily assimilated. And that's exactly what we're seeing, is that these programs have taken off like wildfire. So the education program and outreach programs are really essential to that vision. Another aspect to the five-year vision is to help the conservatory, which is our new partner um, over the last couple of years, um, grow and become the place to experience art for, for people firsthand. They can come to see the symphony and be inspired, and then if they want to make great art, they go to the conservatory and they can learn dance, they can learn um, uh, visual arts, music, anything that they want to, to do that they've dreamed about doing, whether they're seven years old or whether they're 70 years old. Uh, we believe the conservatory will be the it place to be. And then finally, uh, my goal, long-term goal for the symphony is to make it into one of the most powerful and influential regional orchestras in the country. Wow. 
I know. I, I know people. <laughs> I get, it's a very lofty goal, but uh, yeah, you know, you know, one reaction I, I, I often get is really for Cape Cod, you know, just Cape why Cod. Why not? Though? Yeah, why not? And it, it, it has less to do with size as it has to do with quality. You know, the, the Cape uh, really understands and appreciates something that is 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 wonderful within their own community, but I think that uh, they just need to be given that quality to to uh, to appreciate it and to expect it too. And that's what they that's what the community has ha, uh, has come to expect when they come see a concert. They want to be knocked out. They want to be entertained. They want to be inspired. So uh, my goal over the next few years is to bring on musicians and to strengthen the musicians we have that that understand that their role on stage, our role on stage together, is to grab someone's soul in the audience. And that's whether we're doing Brahms, or Beethoven, Mozart, or the Beatles, or Gershwin, uh, or Billy Joel. It does not matter. We're, we're there to excite the audience. Absolutely, to bring the energy that's created on stage when you're making music out there into the public and, and have someone who may not know that, that they can feel that, feel it for the first time. That's exactly right. My favorite person in the audience is the person coming for the very first time. I, I, I do everything in my mind and prepare and on stage in rehearsal uh, for that individual who's never, who's never been there before. Yes, people who love classical music or pops uh, for years and years, they come and they say, we're just absolutely loving it. We don't even need to go to Boston. We hear that quite often and don't need to deal with the, with the drive and the traffic and, and uh, the convenience and the pride of having it in their backyard. But uh, it's the first person who might come to the concert thinking, Either I have no idea what I'm going to expect, or yeah, I know what's going to happen. I, I already have a, uh, a stereotype in my right. mind. I'm going to be bored. I don't want to hear violins. You know, I'll just snooze through this and you know get on with my day. Right. It's 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 really something for another generation. Mm -hmm. And we explode that myth time after time again. And really, don't take my word for it. All you have to do is come see our concerts and see the line for the will call, or, or, or and 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 people can't even get tickets when they show up. Uh, concerts, for example. Uh, you know, our Christmas holiday pops concerts completely sold out yep. months and months in, ahead in, in advance. And that's true for our classical concerts, too. Absolutely. And of course, uh, speaking of, of the holiday season, we are in that right now. Your holiday pops concert has gone by, but the Messiah is taking place. And you're moving out of the, the Barnesville High School Performing Arts Center, and you're taking the show kind of on the road. That's right. Uh, we think it's very, very important. And if we're the Cape Cod Symphony Orchestra, I think we really need to be in the community. So we have... Uh, two locations, two new locations. We're performing at Christ the King Church in Mashpee. Two performances there, December 14th, Friday evening, December 15th, Saturday evening. Friday evening's at, at um, I think, 7.30. 7.30. And then Saturday evening at 8 o'clock. And then Sunday afternoon in Provincetown. And that's fantastic. It is. I mean, if you're, if you're going to be on the fringes of the Cape, that's, <laughs> that's where it is, it's at. But they have a beautiful town hall there. It's been renovated mm. with gorgeous wood uh, environment. The acoustics are fabulous there and at Christ the King Church. And I particularly think that Handel's Messiah is a work that really fits a uh, setting outside of the concert hall. It was obviously written as a sacred work. And so when you do it in a church, it has that kind of... of um, uh, appropriateness, but performing it also in a town hall makes sense too, because when it was premiered, it wasn't pr premiered in a, in a church. Really? That's right. It was almost considered half sacred, half theater. Um, religion back in the 18th century was a more had a more secular place uh, in in society. So um, that that's befitting as well. Both locations are going to sound great, but I tell you what's really unusual about it, Sarah, is our approach to Messiah. Okay. It's going to be a period instrument approach, meaning that we're actually going to be approximating the sounds, and in some cases, the actual instruments of the 18th century. Wow. Now, why is that important? Well, Messiah, as popular as it's become, has become somewhat um, modernized in a way that, that they think that bigger is better. Right. Uh, uh, it's a, uh, the modern approach is a little heavier. Um, it can be a little bit more, I, I, I would say, at worst, it becomes a little bombastic. Um, and it also becomes a little classified, meaning that it, it becomes more of, in the, of the domain of classical music rather than of a, a sacred spiritual, spiritual nature. Now, of course, there is the artistic element. It's mm. written by the great Baroque composer, George Frederick Handel. But it loses its immediacy and uh, the purpose of the piece, which is to tell the life of Christ right. from birth to crucifixion to resurrection. It's a beautiful story. 
We're doing primarily the Christmas portion, by mm. the way. We're, we're uh, only doing highlights of the second and third parts, but we're, of course, during Christmas time, we're doing the, mainly the Christmas. But the Hallelujah chorus is in there, et cetera, et cetera. But what you gain by performing with an early music approach is a lightness and transparency. And you have fewer singers. Uh, we have about 25 singers or so. And you get a more immediacy of the text. So you feel like the oratorio is being spoken to you. Interesting. So you really get a, get a grasp of the story and you're not listening to the music and, and kind of just hearing the music. You actually hear the, the story itself and get drawn into that. Exactly. Exactly. Both the beauty and the music and the text speak to you. And that's really the marriage that it was all born from in the, in the beginning. So we think that this will be a more immediate, more emotional, um, and more historically aware performance than most what people will get um, normally. Um, there are some early music ensembles in Boston, and it's a kind of a hotbed for early music, but we wanted to bring that kind of approach to the Cape. Wonderful. Well, moving beyond uh, the, the holiday season, of course, there's uh, so many wonderful things. I know you've got the New Year's concert coming up, but talk to me about what we'll see in the symphony in the future. I kind of want to get a big picture vision. Obviously, as you mentioned earlier, you're looking to kind of increase the education and increase the awareness and really make it Cape Cod Symphony and make it a case where people don't always have to come to Hyannis to see the symphony. So so where do you envision uh, the music going in the next few years? Well, I'm, I'm looking to the future. Definitely. I'm looking to technology, I'm looking to the internet, I'm looking to broadcast. That if we don't exist in people's iPhones and iPads and at home, then for many people, for thousands and thousands and thousands of people, we won't exist at all. So we, what we are looking at right now is working with the musicians to discuss how we can bring content to the internet, how people can see firsthand that we're not just an ordinary orchestra. They can see the, the excitement, the physicality, the energy, the creativity, the joy, mm. the fun of what we're doing. So that's, that's definitely one area. We're going to try, try to, to capture that. Uh, the other area is the summertime. As you know, Cape Cod explodes with activity it and does. population during the summertime. But we really don't have a footprint here during the summer. Which is kind of amazing, actually, when you think about it, how long the symphony's been around, and that's the fact that that's so many people there. It's, you know, why take a break during the summer? This is when you should be out there. It, it, you'd think you'd be born in the summer. It, indeed. Um, and it, it makes so much sense. We live on one of the most beautiful places on Earth and uh, the rest of the world knows it as well. So that is where we're turning our attention to, creating a summer festival, kind of like a, maybe a Tanglewood South, if mm. you will, uh, or an Aspen East, <laughs> 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 and uh, offer concerts, and it, and it could be a mixture of classical and pops, or it, we can e even present, because we have a presenting arm as well, um, other types of artists, whether it be folk, rock, pop, um, jazz, and that is our, 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 our dream, is to start that probably within the next couple of years. Wonderful. I think that would be excellent. Now, are you envisioning indoors, outdoors, a combination of both? I mean, obviously, outdoors uh, has, its, has its pluses, but also you never can count on the weather, so you can't say 100%. So what, 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 where does that fall in your vision? Well, you hit the issue right on the nose. That is the un unpredictability of the weather. Absolutely. And, and that could be quite uh, severe, because when mm. you invest that much money and effort, uh, you want to be able to present a show. Well, I, I would say probably, for security's sake, on a, on a regular basis, it would be some kind of in, indoor venue. Uh, but it can be some special uh, and accessible indoor venue. We're looking at a lot of different possibilities, but the, the location is going to be key to the success of Indeed. that. I, I agree with you. Indeed. So before uh, I close out the interview, I just obviously I know that, that, that you work to try and bring the symphony to as many people as possible. And perhaps we have some viewers out there who haven't gone to a concert and haven't experienced, you know, what it, what it truly is, you know, whether they be older people or more of the younger audience that we have here on the Cape. So what right. would you say to try and get someone in the doors uh, to see a, a symphony concert, whether it be the Messiah that's happening, you know, coming up very soon or whether it be something that happens in the future? Well, you're right. There are a lot of people who haven't seen the symphony. As, as popular as we are and as large as, as an arts organization as we are, I'm always very cognizant that we still have a minority of the population who've experienced us. So I'm, I'm aware of not only the younger generation, uh, and when I think, say younger generation, I don't necessarily mean people who are in their 20s uh, or 30s, which I'm very tuned into. But I'm also aware of the younger people in their 40s, 50s, and, and you know, early 60s as well. Uh, so that means uh, 
altering our program in a way that makes them feel more comfortable to come and, and, and our marketing and like I was saying having content on the internet so they can try. I mean as we know online buying Amazon.com and all these other kinds of, of, of shopping is huge. And so you know, people are going to shop for their entertainment that way. They're going to go to YouTube and say, okay, what do I do tonight? I've heard exactly. about the symphony. Exactly. But once they get there, once you get the horse to the water to drink, what is that experience like? And so we're constantly tweaking and, and refining how people can feel more comfortable and less foreign to the experience. Um, I'm also aware of the diversity issue uh, of increasing ethnic diversity. And so that's something that you know, we want to bring the world to the stage and, and different kinds of genre as well, whether it's bluegrass or, or, or jazz, like I said. We, we, we want everyone to feel comfortable, rock and roll. Exactly. We, that's been very popular for us, whether we've brought the Beatles or uh, we're actually planning on, on bringing um, a, a, the music of Elton John and Billy Joel Wonderful. to the stage as well. Uh, so, you know, that's where that next generation is, is coming. And then finally, just me being me. Me being a person who was born in the United States, who, uh, who is part of the MTV generation, um, who, who can be that bridge between worlds, uh, between Europe and, and America, uh, between the MTV generation and beyond. Uh, I, I want to be that kind of host for great music and great art. Wonderful. Well, Junko, I appreciate so much you taking the time uh, to sit down with us here and uh, wish you the best of luck and we'll be uh, seeing you at the symphony. Thank you. Thank See you, you so much. My guest today has been the artistic director and conductor of the Cape Cod Symphony Orchestra, Junko Pak. I'm Sarah Colvin.